met a gypsy. I think the sport's lost sight of the fact of like, I think they, that the sport thinks that the rivalry between uh, Eli Tomac and Marvin Musquin is somehow going to be as crazy as Chad Reed and James Stewart. I got fucking news for everybody. No one cares. Yeah. Unfortunately, and not, that's, and that's the truth for sure. It is true. And it sucks. They're both amazing dirt bike riders. But like, it, it's not about that. Like, even like I'm a huge UFC fan. Win or lose... People want to see Conor McGregor fight. Mm-hmm. And it's like, because there's this transcendence that happens. There's this magic special source that no one really knows the recipe to it. You had it. Ricky had it. James had it. Travis has it. K-Dub has it. McGrath had it. And it's like, if you look through history in for mine, it's like you've got the Bradshaw era. Then you've got the Stanton, uh, John Michelle Bale era. And then you've got like us, uh, sorry, um, McGrath comes and along and, and then, yeah, him and Emig. And then it's like, then uh, Ricky comes along and then you dethrone Ricky and then James dethrones you. And then, but then it stops. Mm-hmm. And like, well, I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Maybe it got too clinical and it got, I think the know, changing of the guard was Ricky, you know, Ricky it got too serious. Ricky took it to a whole new level of being serious and, You know, I think it was, there was such a, there was such a part of the sport, like, like I don't ever believe, or I don't buy into that Jeremy didn't work hard or, you know, the races were still 20 laps long back then. He was so unbelievably talented and so much better technically than everybody else. Maybe he didn't have to work as hard as Mike LaRocco or Jeff Emig or Larry Ward, um, but he was able to technically be so much better. And then Ricky came in and I think lacked in the early days the technique, but then, you know, had to work harder and took the working hard to a whole nother level. And then I think as the years went on, the technique caught up and he, he just kind of like went on a tear where technique and you know although it wasn't always pretty I always get a bit of a kick out of and I think Ricky plays it up a little bit and maybe it's something that he believes but for me I don't believe or buy into that Ricky wasn't ever as talented as Kevin Windham because Kevin did things definitely nice and pretty and whatever but like Ricky was ridiculously talented Mm. you know like and I think that people always said it and Ricky just kind of takes it. And you know, I think it's his way of his little brush off kind of brush off and, and get a, you know, a bit of a dig and a jam it in people's faces that he doesn't really, he wasn't that talented, but he was, he worked hard. Yeah. I don't buy Like, I don't know that I've, you know, James included. I don't know that from motocross to supercross from hard, slick mud ruts. I don't know that I've, actually confidently i know i haven't raced anybody more talented than ricky carmichael in that era you know those areas i just think he he had a work ethic and you know things that just made it work right for him you know like he i think he was the first one to come in with the trainer with the bus um you know with a tight group of people like more insulated like he yeah like he he was the first one that really took the you know the training camp and the 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 training facility to that next level um so i think when you're the first you're always you're always learning and you've learned a lot of things that you know myself coming in then james coming in we were always doing things based off him not yeah in in a way yes based off of what you see and and you know it's kind of like okay well he's winning and he's doing this this and this okay we need this and this and it's like essentially you're three four years behind yeah you know um you know maybe in reality it didn't really work out like that but in in a lot of ways yeah your that your learning process has got to go quicker and and because he's already been there and done that I can and, see that logic you know what making I mean? sense and I think that when you when you now look at our sport our sport is literally based off of the greatest of all time in the fact that you got to have alden as a trainer you got to be 
you know, in a boot camp from November to January. You got to eat this, you know, from here to here. And, you know, you can only eat so many calories a day. And it's, I just, I don't believe that there's, these guys generally love what they do. I, yeah. I don't, I don't believe that. I really don't, you know, like I, where I think, I think Ricky, James, myself, and prior to that, we, we truly loved it. And, you know, I think it was fun and it was, it was an experience. And, and now it's just, I don't know, it, it doesn't have that same feeling about it. You know, like where I don't see, I did't see Eli or Marvin, Jason, like truly loving what they do. Well, that's know? what's crazy. Like, did you see the little snippet um, where he said, like, it's pretty funny. I've actually fucking can't believe he said it, but he goes like, Oh yeah, I just had to tell Alden that I'm sick of him and I'm going to California. It's nothing personal, but I just want to get away from you. Like, mm-hmm. fucking, that's like gnarly. Like, that's the champ, and he's telling the greatest and trainer ever. Like, nah, man, I'm over it. And, maybe, and he won. And maybe why he did win, you know, for sure. Maybe, well, like, you maybe know, it's time. In my opinion, it's time for the Webs and the Marvins and all these people, like you got to take it all and you got to take it in. And you, you know, in, in my opinion, I feel like some of the athletes that are there, their managers are more there and invested there than the athlete is. The athlete's mind is elsewhere, you know, so he's there, but he's not really there. He's just going through the motions. But like how much, if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.